Hello everyone, welcome to the 7th session of Transport Layer under VTU eShikshana program. In the last session, we were discussing about go back n ARQ and selective repeat ARQ. In this session, we will understand what is connection oriented using TCP flow control and TCP segment structure. See, coming to the connection oriented transport, TCP is a connection oriented protocol. TCP provides multiplexing, demultiplexing and error detection. TCP does not provide error recovery. I have understood. TCP provides multiplexing, demultiplexing and error detection, but TCP does not provide error recovery uh, tcp detects error but it will not recover the error however tcp and udp differ in many ways the most fundamental difference is that udp is connectionless whereas tcp is connection oriented tcp is connection oriented because to send data you have to establish the connection Using UDP, you can send data without establishing the connection. UDP is connectionless, whereas TCP is connection oriented and TCP is reliable, whereas UDP is unreliable. UDP is called as user datagram protocol, whereas TCP is called as connection oriented and transmission control protocol. UDP is connectionless because it sends data without establishing a connection. TCP is connection oriented because before one application process begin to send data to another, the two process must first handshake with each other. That is, they must send some preliminary segments. Those are connection request, connection replay, disconnection request and disconnection replay to each other to establish the connection. See, before establishing the connection in TCP, first handshake is required. In handshake, three steps are there. It is also called as three-way handshake. Before sending any data from one process to another process, three-way handshake is required. In three-way handshake, First, you have to send some messages to establish the connection. Those messages are connection request, connection replay and disconnection request, disconnection replay. For establishing the connection, you have to send connection request message. For that, you should get connection replay. Then connection is established successfully. After that, you can send data. If there is no data to send, then you have to disconnect the connection by sending connection request. For that, you should get disconnection replay. That is, for disconnecting the connection, you have to send disconnection request. For that, you should get the disconnection replay. Then connection is disconnected successfully. Okay. Now, what is TCP connection? TCP connection provides full duplex data transfer. It provides full duplex. There are different types of connection, full duplex, off duplex, and simplex. Simplex means uh, only uh, one process can send data, other process can receive. Whereas in half duplex, both uh, process can send data, but not at the same time. Whereas in full duplex, uh, both uh, application process can send uh, data to each other simultaneously and at the same time. So TCP connection provides full duplex data transfer. That is application level data can be transferred in both direction between two hosts at same time simultaneously. This is called as full duplex. TCP provides full duplex communication. And TCP connection is always point to point, that is between single sender and a single receiver. Multicasting is not possible with TCP. What is this multicasting? Multicasting is not possible uh, using uh, TCP. 
right and uh, multicasting means transfer of data from one sender to many receiver in single send operation so this multicasting is not possible with tcp because tcp provides point to point uh, connection uh, in uh, multicasting the transfer of data from one sender to many receiver can be achieved in single send operation this uh, uh, option is not available in tcp connection so with tcp two hosts are uh, company and three are crowd so uh, tcp is always point to point tcp is connection oriented tcp provides a uh, full duplex data transfer and uh, tcp is a reliable protocol because for every data you are going to get an acknowledgement and how connection is established in tcp tcp uh, established connection using three way handshake uh, three way handshake in uh, last slide i have discussed that is you have to send some messages to establish the connection successfully three way handshake means before a client attempts to connect with a server the server must first bind to and listen at a port to establish a connection this is called passive open this is called as a passive open once the passive open is established a client may initiate an active open to establish a connection the three way handshake occur this is how three way handshake takes place that is before sending a data to another process you have to establish a connection using three way handshake in three way handshake passive open and active open uh, will come into picture uh, that is uh, passive open means first you have to bind afterwards you have to listen uh, then uh, passive open uh, is established a client may initiate an active open to establish a connection the three way handshake is very much important in uh, uh, tcp uh, right uh, what is this uh, port number see port number is required to reach the target uh, process for every process a port number will be there uh, to identify any system in the network ip address is very much important to identify the uh, a process you have to use port number okay uh, java client program uh, is used to uh, establish the connection a java client program does this by issuing the command this statement is used to create the socket and the socket is a combination of ip address and port number for example uh, for a system ip address is used and for application a port number is used for application like http the port number is 80 so using java client program you can create socket the statement uh, socket client socket is equal to new socket uh, that is a socket consists of host number and port number using this statement you can create a socket and once a tcp connection is established the two application process can send data to each other because tcp is full duplex they can send data at the same time so tcp is a connection oriented uh, it is reliable and uh, provides full duplex full duplex means uh, both the process can send data at the same time simultaneously so once a tcp connection is established the two application process can send data to each other uh, because tcp is full duplex and uh, using full duplex you can send data uh, between two uh, hosts uh, simultaneously at the same time uh, coming to the uh, tcp send and uh, receive buffer see uh, uh, to establish a connection tcp uses three way and check and once a tcp connection is established the two application uh, process can send data to each other uh, because tcp uh, provides full duplex uh, connection and uh, you consider the sending of data from the client process to the uh, server uh, process 
द क्लाइंट प्रोसेस पासस ए स्ट्रीम ऑफ डेटा थ्रू द साकेट साकेट इज नथिंग बट ए डोर ऑफ द प्रोसेस साकेट इज कंसीडर्ड एज द डोर ऑफ द प्रोसेस एंड द साकेट कंसिस्ट ऑफ आईपी एड्रेस एंड पोर्ट नंबर राइट कंसीडर द फिगर हियर Uh, that uh, stream of data is uh, uh, passed to the connection send buffer stream of data is uh, uh, passed uh, to the uh, connections send buffer see this is send buffer tcp directs a stream of data to the connection send buffer the maximum amount of data that can be grabbed and placed in a segment is limited by maximum segment size the segment size is uh, depending upon maximum segment size that is the mss that is uh, the maximum amount of data that can be placed in a segment is uh, limited by maximum segment size and uh, the maximum segment size depends on tcp implementation and it is determined by the operating system what is the size of the segment uh, the size of the segment is limited to maximum segment size and it is uh, uh, determined by the operating system and uh, mss depends on tcp implementation mss depend on tcp implementation see the data is sent to the send buffer and uh, the size of the segment is uh, decided by uh, operating system and uh, the size of the segment is limited to maximum segment size that is uh, mss okay maximum segment uh, size is very much important based on that uh, the segment size is dependent m yes yes that is maximum segment size and it is determined by the operating system and can often be configured that is common values are 1500 uh, 500 uh, bytes uh, 536 uh, bytes and 512 bytes Uh, these are some of the maximum segment size these segment size are often chosen in order to avoid ip fragmentation if the uh, size of the segment is more than this then you have to fragment the data that is you have to divide the data into chunks to avoid this uh, uh, fragmentation we use maximum segment size and the mss is the maximum amount of application level data in the segment uh, not the maximum size of the tcp segment including header so what is this mss mss is the maximum amount of application level data in the segment and it is not including the header size so it is not in, uh, included with header just it is the size of the segment uh, that is application level data Uh, can send and uh, uh, not uh, maximum segment size will not come with header so not the maximum size of the tcp segment including header header part is excluded just uh, the data is included uh, that is application level data will be there in the segment and the size of application level data is limited to maximum segment size and uh, it is uh, not including Uh, not included that uh, header uh, part header part is not included in the maximum segment uh, size and uh, tcp send and receive buffer are set aside during the initial three way handshake so uh, each side of the connection has its own send buffer and receive buffer see tcp uh, send and receive buffer Uh, will be there at both the uh, side that is each side of the connection has its own send buffer and its own receive buffer 
coming to the tcp segment structure and what is this uh, uh, maximum segment size and maximum transmission uh, unit see uh, the maximum amount of application layer data in the segment is called as maximum segment size and the maximum transmission unit means the length of the largest link layer frame that can be sent by the local sending host this mtu maximum uh, transmission unit maximum transmission unit means the length of the largest uh, frame uh, that can be sent by the local sending host this is the length of the frame and this is the length of, this is the size of the segment this is the maximum amount of application layer data in the segment the data in the segment and it is applicable for frame that is the length of the largest link layer frame that can be sent by the local sending host now see there are seven layers in osi reference model the data sent at the physical layer is called as bits and the data sent by the data link layer is called as frame okay maximum transmission unit is used in uh, data link layer so the length of the largest link layer frame that can be sent by the local uh, sending host okay physical layer data link layer network layer transport layer transport layer uses segment network layer uses packet so and uh, uh, data link layer uses frames uh, physical layer uses uh, bits uh, coming to the tcp segment structure in tcp segment structure we have source port destination port sequence number acknowledgement number header length uh, some six bit flag uh, receive window internet checksum urgent data pointer options and data so when sending a large file the tcp breaks it into chunks of uh, size that is uh, based on maximum segment size except for the last chunk so when sending a uh, large file tcp breaks it into chunks of uh, uh, maximum segment size Uh, except for the last chunk uh, for the last chunk uh, no need to fragment you can send that uh, directly so uh, while sending large file it uh, breaks it into chunks and the source and destination uh, port uh, number are used for multiplexing and demultiplexing so uh, tcp segment structure consists of so many fields in that source port and destination port uh, are used for multiplexing and for demultiplexing and uh, coming to the uh, sequence number and acknowledgement number sequence number and acknowledgement number are 32 bit uh, right uh, and uh, it is used in implementing a reliable data transfer service source port and uh, source port and destination port is used for multiplexing and demultiplexing right and uh, uh, source port is used to identify the source and uh, destination port is used to identify the destination and uh, every uh, application as a uh, port number and every system is identified by the ip address and uh, sequence number and acknowledgement acknowledgement uh, number are uh, 32 bit long it is used for uh, reliable data transfer service because for every uh, packet a sequence number will be there and uh, for uh, every packet you are going to receive acknowledgement when uh, frame is sent you are going to get acknowledgement for that frame in uh, go back n and uh, select to repeat we have seen uh, this sequence number and acknowledgement number however header length field specifies the length of the tcp header in 32 bit world ip address is a uh, uh, 32 uh, 32 bit long uh, right ip address it is a uh, 32 bit uh, that is 
four um, octets will be there. Four octets will be there. Uh, uh, and uh, TCP header is typically 20 bytes but can be of variable length due to the TCP option field. Uh, typically, it is uh, uh, empty. So, header length is a 32 bit word and uh, uh, IPv4 and IPv6 are there. IPv4 is a 32 bit uh, long. Okay. Uh, and uh, IPv6 is uh, 128 bit long. And uh, uh, TCP header is typically 20 bytes. Uh, coming to the flags, there are six flags uh, that is uh, urgent, ACK, push, uh, reset, sync, and finish. See, urgent bit indicates that uh, there is a data in the segment that the sending side upper layer entity as uh, marked as urgent. There is uh, some urgent data in the segment. If you make uh, that uh, data as uh, urgent, then it is treated. Yeah. Uh, early and uh, the pr priority will be more for such data that is uh, urgent bit indicates that there is a data in the segment that the sending side that uh, comes at the sender part uh, as marked as urgent sending side upper layer entity as marked as urgent see uh, the data flows from uh, uh, top to bottom at the uh, sender side whereas the data uh, goes from bottom to top at the receiver side right and uh, ack bit indicates that the value carried in the acknowledgement field is valid so this is what acknowledgement bit and uh, coming to the uh, push bit this indicates that the receiver should pass the data to the upper layer immediately uh, this is uh, a bit indicates that you have to pass the data to the upper layer immediately if this bit is set to one push bit is set to one then you have to pass the uh, uh, data uh, immediately uh, at the receiver and uh, reset sync fi uh, finish bits are used for connection setup and uh, disconnection for uh, connection setup and to tear down the connection uh, these three uh, uh, flags are used that is reset sync and finish uh, flag next uh, coming to the receive uh, window field receive window field uh, is uh, one uh, field in uh, uh, tcp segment structure it is a 16 bit field uh, used for flow control to indicate the number of uh, bytes that a receiver is willing to Accept. Receive window present at the receiver side based on the size of the receive window you have to uh, send uh, data to the uh, receiver so that uh, overflow uh, will not take place at the receiver side. Uh, use it for flow control. It is used for flow control. Uh, right. TCP provides flow control, uh, flow control, error control but it, uh, it does not provide error recover. So use it for flow control receive window field to indicate the number of bytes that a receiver is willing to accept based on the size of the receiver window you have to send the data uh, to the receiver and the checksum field is used to detect error that is uh, the 16 bit checksum field is used for error checking of the tcp error that's why it is used to uh, detect the error but you cannot recover error using tcp and uh, uh, next field is uh, urgent data pointer. It is also 16-bit. Uh, uh, indicates the location of uh, last byte of the urgent data. The urgent data pointer indicates the location of the last uh, byte of uh, urgent data. Next comes to the option field. Options and uh, variable length used when a sender and receiver negotiates the maximum segment size. Uh, when the maximum segment size is uh, negotiated, uh, or a window scaling factor uh, for use in high speed network. We all know the maximum segment size is 1500 bytes, 536 bytes, and 512 bytes. If 
uh, you change this number then the option field uh, comes into uh, picture and coming to the flow control uh, what is this flow control you all know tcp provides uh, flow control service to eliminate the possibility of the sender uh, overflowing the receiver's buffer so it is different from congestion control congestion control is different and flow control is different congestion control means it is used to uh, uh, avoid the uh, congestion uh, right when congestion takes place if uh, traffic increases then congestion takes place because of that a packet drop happens and uh, uh, performance of the network comes down and the flow control means you have to uh, send the data based on the size of the receiver buffer so tcp provides uh, flow control uh, service to eliminate the possibility of sender overflowing the receiver buffer so uh, flow control uh, is uh, uh, one uh, service provided by tcp and uh, um, uh, flow control uh, is based on the uh, receiver window size that is uh, based on the size of the receiver window you have to send the data to the uh, receiver and uh, received window is nothing but a variable maintained by the sender maintained by the sender use it to give the sender an idea of how much free uh, buffer space is available at the receiver so based on the size of the receiver the sender should send data if uh, the sender send more data then the data workflow takes place tcp is full duplex so the sender at each side maintains a distinct receive window so tcp uh, provides a full duplex uh, communication that is uh, uh, at the same time both uh, the uh, application can uh, send the message uh, tcp is full duplex means the sender at each side maintains a distinct uh, receive window and uh, uh, you can send the message simultaneously between two hosts at the same time and the uh, receive uh, window and uh, the receive buffer you can see uh, here uh, by uh, what is uh, by maintaining the receive uh, buffer that is the size of the receive buffer uh, at b and, and uh, at a uh, you see this is a, a diagram that shows a receive window and receive buffer and uh, receive window means it is a variable maintained by the sender and receive buffer means the size of the uh, receive uh, buffer at the other end see uh, consider an example see, we will consider one example here host a is sending a large file to host b over a tcp connection that is a to b a, see this is what receive window and receive buffer see this is what the receive buffer and this is what uh, receive window uh, this, this is tcp data buffer this is uh, the spare room and uh, data from ip okay now consider an example this diagram shows uh, receive buffer it uh, uh, consists of receive uh, window and uh, tcp uh, data in the buffer and uh, data from the upper layer now consider a, a host sending a large file to host b over a tcp connection that is you are sending a file from a to b what is this receive buffer the size of the receive buffer uh, allocated by b receive buffer is present at the receiver side and the size of the receive buffer is allocated by b and last byte read see you have to consider some fields one is receive buffer last byte read last byte received uh, etc last byte read means the number of the number of the last byte in the data stream uh, read from the buffer by the application process in uh, b See last which is the last byte 
received at the receiver that is the number of lost byte in the data stream uh, from the buffer by the application process in b uh, and the last byte received and that is the number of lost byte in the data stream that has arrived uh, from the network and has been placed in the uh, receive buffer at b if you encounter the word stream then it is a tcp connection if you uh, encounter the word datagram then it represents udp so here stream is there data stream data stream is uh, that is uh, uh, through tcp connection using tcp connection see receive buffer means the size of the uh, buffer at uh, receiver last byte read and last byte received uh, light difference slight difference uh, between these two words that is the number uh, of last byte in the uh, data uh, from uh, read from the buffer uh, that is uh, last a byte uh, read from the buffer uh, by the application in b and the last byte received means the number of last uh, byte in the data stream that has arrived from the network and as uh, been placed in the receive buffer at b last byte received uh, and it is placed in the buffer this is last byte read from the uh, buffer and last byte received minus last byte read uh, should be less than or equal to receive buffer see uh, last byte received minus last byte read should be always less than or equal to receive buffer otherwise a data overflow takes place so receive window is equal to receive buffer minus uh, of last byte received minus last byte read so uh, this is uh, uh, formula this is uh, important we should understand uh, last byte receive minus last byte read should be less than or equal to receive buffer and receive window is equal to receive buffer minus last byte received minus last byte read so uh, b ma maintains a variable receive window placing its current value in the receive window field of every segment it sends to a and uh, a keep track of variables last byte sent and last byte acknowledged see uh, a uh, also uh, keeps uh, some information that is a keeps track of variables like last byte sent and last byte acknowledged acknowledged uh, because uh, if you are sending the message from a to b then um, a is the sender b is the receiver and the sender sends the message and it receives the acknowledgement for the sent message whereas uh, at the receiver the receiver receives the message and sends the acknowledgement for the successfully received message and the message should be error free if uh, there is error then it sends negative acknowledgement otherwise it uh, just discards it uh, reject uh, the uh, uh, error message and uh, uh, a keeps track of variables like lost byte sent and uh, a last byte acknowledged making sure throughout the connections uh, live okay that uh, uh, last byte sent minus last byte acknowledgement less than or equal to receive window so this is uh, what last byte sent minus last byte received should be less than or equal to uh, receive window so receive window is uh, there at both the uh, ends and udp does not provide flow control udp uh, keeps sending the message and it will not worry about uh, the uh, uh, receiver uh, buffer size whether uh, it is full or not it will keep sending the data and uh, uh, for uh, every message you may not get acknowledgement acknowledgement concept will not be there in udp right so
so uh, here uh, the session ends in uh, next session we will understand uh, three way handshake and also tcp connection management uh, thank you